Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and welcome to the Juniper Open Shortest Path First OSPF Lab Number 7. In this lab, we're going to take a detailed look at internal route summarization. So, if this network topology looks familiar, we used this same network topology for our last OSPF lab, which was our not so stubby area lab, and we also used this same network topology for OSPF lab number 5 which was the stub area lab. So continuing on, we are going to, in this lab, take a look at internal route summarization. If you haven't seen those labs, what I'm going to do is, I've already configured all of the interfaces for us, because if I had not, as you can see, that would be a lot of work. So I can, I'm just going to give you a high-level overview of our network topology. We have six routers in the network five of which are in the OSPF domain. And then our sixth router, which is R6, is actually outside of our OSPF network. And what we're going to see is we're going to bring in some external routes off of R6. From R5, we're going to redistribute our static. So on R5, we're going to have static routes pointed towards the loopback 0.6 networks that are off of R6 and then on R5 we're going to create a simple routing policy in which we're going to export those routes into our OSPF domain on R5 so they're going to come in as external routes. R1, R2, and R3 have interfaces in OSPF area 0 R2 and R4 have interfaces in OSPF area 4. And on R4, we have loopback 0 0.4 with four networks, the 10.0.0.4, .0 .0 the 1.4, 2.4, and 3.4, all slash 24s. So what we're going to see in this lab is internal route summarization. We're going to summarize all of these networks into one prefix on R2, the atom, I'm sorry, the area border router, and send them into area 0. And then we're going to see area 0 broadcast this to other areas within the OSPF domain. So between R3 and R5, we have area 35. And you're going to see that I have LT. Dot, for instance, on R5, LT.53. This is indicating a logical tunnel interface. And I have that all LTs equal LT120.xx. For instance, on our one LT13 is actually LT-120.13. And all the networks between the routers, between R1 and R2, we have the 12 network. Between R2 and R4, we have the 24 network. Between R1 and R3, we have the 13 network. Between R3 and R5, we have the 35 network. And between R5 and R6, we have the 56 network. The router IPs are as follows. R1, all of its interfaces are dot one. R2, all of its interfaces are dot two, and so on. As you can see, R6, all of the loopback zero, all of the networks on loopback zero dot six end with a six. And R4 with a four. So that's a high level overview of our network topology. What we're going to do for reachability is we're going to, on R6, just create a default route, point it towards R5. So let's go ahead and get to the configuration. The first thing we're going to do is we already have all of the interfaces configured. And so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and jump straight into, well, let's see. Let's go on to R4. And if I do a show configuration, we only have the logical tunnel. So let's do this on R4. We're going to create, we'll do set interfaces loopback 0.4 family inet address 10.0.0.1 slash 24. Oops. Oh, let's see. I think I got to be at the top of the. I don't think I can do this under the logical system, which is R4. 
I'll show you how I logged into that in a second. And if you're not familiar, I guess I should also point this out. If you're not familiar with logical systems, you're probably wondering what the logical tunnel is. Well, the logical tunnel is an interface that we can use 